Hi there, I'm Jamie Taylor. Welcome to Your Health Matters, brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center, your community-owned hospital. Every week I have a different guest on the program and we talk about programs, services, healthcare issues that I think are relevant to you and your family. I hope you'll stay tuned because right after these messages, I have an exciting guest on the program today. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Chris Laird, who's the director of KRMC's education department, right? Get that right? Yes, ma'am. Good. Thanks for being on the show today, Thank Chris. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So education, people probably think, well, by the time they come to work at the hospital, they should be educated, right? We, well, and I guess they are. Yes, usually ma'am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we, what you and I know, and maybe our general public doesn't know, is that for their health, we make sure our employees stay current Absolutely. on their education. One of the big goals for the education department is continuing education. Um, as the nurses come in, we cover nurses, CNAs, UCs. Um, the eventual goal is to have facility-wide education to where we go throughout and can touch every different department within the facility. That's awesome. Yes, ma'am. Now, in the past, I think our education department was more as kind of a, a resource library, mm -hmm. right? People could go there to get books or to check out AV equipment and things like that. So you're new as the director and you're doing a lot of revamping. Let's talk about that. We're restructuring a lot within <laughs> okay. the department. Our goal is previously the department was open during business hours mm -hmm. um, and if you needed one of those books or resources if it was after hours nobody was available mm. um, we've actually gone through and we're partnering with Mosby's um, Elsevier who is a huge um, publisher for oh. um, resources and materials for healthcare as well as a lot of other things in doing that we've got what's called Mosby skills Mosby consult um, Mosby's performance manager and Mosby's Index. Okay. And with those products, we have a vast amount of information available to all of our staff. Um, it's online, it's available 24-7. Oh, that's um, nice. It, it makes it to where we've got resources that are available to any of the staff that are looking for it. Um, no matter what department they're in or what area they're looking for, we've got evidence-based practice to make sure that we are providing the best care for the patients. That's awesome. So even if someone has a question maybe about something that they're dealing with, they could go online and yes, look it up? Um, <laughs> All of the different products have a different aspect that they work with. Okay. Um, the Mosby's skills is basically a procedure manual. Mm. So it makes it to where we can standardize, and that's one of our big goals in the education department, is to kind of consolidate and standardize everything that we're doing. But if there's a nurse on the floor that's looking up a procedure that either one isn't done very often mm -hmm. or they're a new nurse and they haven't seen it before and they want to read up on it um, so they know what's coming back, whether it's from a surgery or whether a procedure being done on the floor, they can look the most recent evidence-based practice up wow. for that skill. That's pretty cool. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> <laughs> we, I keep learning new things every time I do this show. So <laughs> hey, It's what it's here for is to right. help all of us get know what the resources yeah. are available. So they can access that just through any of the computers? Yes ma'am, it's available on our intranet for all of oh, our staff okay. to where they can go through and it's a site based license so any body within our facility can pull it up. So they don't, it's not like we have an individual license and line, log in kind of thing. Yes ma'am. That's pretty cool. It's very awesome, it's exciting. Now as, as well as that, I know that we're encouraging ongoing education yes, and credentialing, right? Is that, am I saying that right? Or yes, ma'am. Certifications. So um, I know, I believe, I've understood that our long-term goal is to make sure that eventually all of our nurses have four-year degrees. Yes, ma'am. The standard is becoming, and more and more, the goal is actually 80% of the staff to have a BSN awesome. um, by a certain date. So okay. we are currently partnering and making agreements with um, different universities. We have a current partnership agreement with Grand Canyon University okay. um, for our staff to be able to go there and whether they get discounts or whether they get um, just a one-to-one -one availability with staff okay. members um, to help further their education. That's we also awesome. have um, 
a partnership with ASU, okay. um, NAU, and I'm currently working on one for Chamberlain University. Oh, wow. So, so they'll have lots of options. Yes, ma'am. Trying to make sure that whatever availability, whatever they're looking for, we can um, help with well, that transition. And of course, I know that we also partner very closely with MCC yes, for that beginning nurses, the extern program, right? And then, so, but then we're encouraging our nursing staff to go on and get their four-year degree. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we actually, I actually met with MCC last week. Oh, good. So we did an orientation for all of their new nurses coming in. Good. So that is a continuing partnership that we have as well. That's awesome. Because, you know, I remember a couple of years ago when I was in high school, couple years ago <laughs> they had really at that point in time they discouraged people to go from going into nursing because they said we had too many nurses we don't need any more which of course at that present time might have been true but then when they discouraged everybody then of course that kind of because we all get older and eventually all those nurses retired and then we had a time when we didn't have enough nurses for a while so where are we at now are we in that cycle, cycle of... <laughs> Currently, there's a lot of need for nurses. So we do need um, more. We do need more nurses. And as the population ages, right. um, as, as those baby, baby boomers, boomers <laughs> start to retire, right. um, it is going to leave a huge gap because that was a, a huge amount of population that was in the nursing program mm -hmm. and have been nurses up on the floors for a while. Well, and as they get older, as those baby boomers get older, we need, they're going to need more health care. Yes, ma'am. And in general, so we need those young uns to come in to help take care of us. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And with the new nurses coming in, that's some of the stuff that we're working on currently right. is um, creating internship programs and residency programs. It's a, a new way to bring in new nurses who have never worked on the floor and actually have a structured orientation for them to come up with. So they get a better idea of what they're getting into? Um, so they have a good idea of what they're getting into and so we have a structured training program so when they come in we can make sure that they are trained and oriented for the unit that they're working with oh, so that they can have the best care for the patients that we have. Because each unit is unique it's in itself. very I mean, unique and specific and right. once you get into specialty units um, they like have a ortho lot of... Or, or pediatrics. Ortho, or pediatrics, OB, um, progressive care, when you start getting into the critical care areas. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of specialty training that goes along with those. And so is that going through Mosby again that helps provide that? or We're or? working with setting up skills and competencies within Mosby's, but also working on getting some of the one-to-one -one training. Um, another program that we're working with is prophecy it's something that we're looking mm -hmm. um, into and that actually has a needs-based assessment so as somebody comes in whether it's a new hire or an incumbent nurse that we currently have they can go through and take an assessment and we know from a education standpoint what they're lacking oh, or what cool. we can help them with okay. so instead of training somebody on something that they already know everything right. about or they're or assuming comfortable that with, they already know yes they may not so we can kind of tailor that education for each and every nurse that's coming through that's awesome so now is that going to be like a requirement then of hiring that they're going to need to go through that assessment or? um it's still work in progress okay um Currently, we've got it to where we're actually looking to partner with the OB department. I actually met with them this morning to okay. um, have them as a demo unit to where they can go through and take the trial to see where they fit and what kind of training and education we can provide to help the care there. Um, but as we roll out, it would hopefully be to where any new hires coming in, we can have set up to where they go through that. Um, Assessment. Yes, ma'am. And I'm sure that's a challenge. I mean, anytime we have change, <laughs> we all know change is a scary thing for anybody, for a lot of people anyway. So I'm sure you get a little bit of pushback on that, but hopefully the staff is open. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, change is always one of those that you have to be very delicate in right. um, handling. Yeah. Um, but we are getting meeting a lot of great feedback um, nice. from the nurses to where a lot of them re truly appreciate the education and the um, resources that we're providing. I was going to say, because not only are we just saying testing to see what they know, but then we're saying, here's the tools you need to help you improve and yes, get better. And so that's awesome. And I think there's not that many places that offer that. It's um, 
in everything that we've purchased, we've got it to where we're trying to make sure um, every department that we cover currently in the nursing division and as we move out um, into the other areas that we provide like an all-encompassing um, education program to where we can make it to where it's a one-stop shop for education. That's really an awesome, it's a, <laughs> a big goal for you, Chris, and it's awesome that you're doing that. And it, to me, it ties in well with our our mission and our culture too to always be providing the best possible care for our patients. Yes, ma'am. You know, so and but at the same time we're providing a great culture for our employees. Yes, ma'am. And it's my culture and my um, philosophy for patient care, whether it's direct patient care or in trying to improve the care that we're providing as a facility, is always about the patient is number one. Great. Um, making sure that we can do whatever we can to provide them with the very best. Now, how did you, because previously, I'm going to segue back a little bit, because you were the d director, if you would, of our CVICU unit. You actually were the one that started that. Yes, ma'am. So you're obviously good at starting things, <laughs> <laughs> coming in and identifying the need and, and getting it up and running. So how did you segue into education then? Um, initially, when I came to Kingman, I came in as a travel nurse. Okay, um, I didn't realize to that. To assist okay. them with starting up the CVICU and educating okay. the nurses that were there. Okay. Um, that position grew to where I became the director of the CVICU um, and continued training and educating. So education is kind of your background, sort of? I have two parents. Um, both of them are teachers. Okay. Um, both of them are special education teachers. Oh, wow. Um, my mom has since passed, but... Okay. Um, I grew up in that environment okay. to where everybody was teaching and everybody. learning. Yes, ma'am. So I, it's, I think it's part of it is ingrained. Okay. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. That makes sense. And then you, but then you went into healthcare. Yes, ma'am. And then saw how you could use both, I guess. Um, <laughs> as I started going back to the starting multiple projects um, as a travel nurse, I have actually worked at multiple facilities and started three open heart programs. My. Um, and that's a big. I mean, it's open heart is not <laughs> not some little, oh, we're just going to start a new thing yes, over here. There's a lot that's involved right. with it, but going through and working on all of that, um, getting the education up, getting the training, um, making sure that the supplies and equipment are there, it's kind of been something that I, I enjoy doing. Awesome. And then it just came from there, then you were saw the need for our overall education. And in uh, initially I was asked to kind of look at the education department and see if I were to um, take it over, what would I want to do differently? Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I initially went through and investigated Mosby's and a lot of the different resources that are available. Had you used Mosby's before? Um, else? I've used them, They because they are Elsevier and Mosby's as a publishing company, I've used a lot of their resources. Okay. And actually one day I was looking at one of their resources and in the back it said Mosby Skills had all the information on it. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That <laughs> looks like something that would be a that huge work, benefit. And right? It kind of spiraled from there. Awesome. Well, I have to tell you that, and we're not done by any means, but I did want to make sure I told you that I'm glad you're not a traveler anymore. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I'm good glad to, to be here. Kind of permanently here. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Because <laughs> I know you brought lots of benefit <laughs> to KRMC, so that's awesome. Thank you, ma'am. So you've gone into education now, and we're looking at the long term for nursing and you but you mentioned other departments as well so what other things are you looking at besides nursing i read a little bit up my sleeve uh -huh. um, okay. i actually met with mr kennedy the coo mm -hmm. of the company and had a meeting with the operation division all of his directors oh, good. and basically informed them of the products that we currently have to see how that we could incorporate it them with um, how they could use those to help with their competencies okay. and training and everything. Hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break okay. and we'll come back and we'll talk about those other departments. So stay tuned. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Chris Laird, the Director of Education here at KRMC. Thanks again for being on the show, Chris. Thank you again for having me. We've been talking about education, ongoing education for our staff and some of the new programs and things you've implemented, which are really exciting. I think both um, for our staff and for the community, I think it's important they know 
that are we're always in working to ensure that our nurses and staff are up to par and have the most recent credentials and know their stuff, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's very so important. It is. And, you know, I share with people all the time. I mean, when we here in a community like this, the patients are our neighbors, our friends, our family. So it is very important that we give them the very best possible care because you're going to run into them at Walmart or Safeway or the movies. So yes, you want to make sure they have a good experience and not come up to you at Safeway. Oh, don't be all crabby and <laughs> mad at you. You want them to have a good experience. <laughs> so, so we're obviously very in uh, tune with our patients and what their needs are. Now you were sharing during the break that we're offering other ongoing classes as well. Let's talk about that through the American Heart Association. Yes, ma'am. We have always been, a, well, we have been a training center for American Heart um, for their basic life support as well as advanced cardiac life support training. Okay. Now, what does that mean? That basically means that a lot of the training that's being done in the area is actually run through us. So there's multiple training sites, but okay. we're a training center for those. So when that class is being done, a lot of those come back to the education department where we are the training center for it. So, so like the trainers are um, come back to us? Or how does that work? I don't, um, we sorry. oversee a lot of the different training sites. Okay. Um, so Kingman Fire Department, a lot of those are training sites that are run through um, the education department at KRMC. And when we say training sites, what is it that they're training? What are they learning? They can train ACLS, BLS, um, Heart Saver. So any of the CPR classes that are going on, a lot of them are through training sites that are done through the our training center itself. Okay. So do we provide the trainers or we train the trainers? Um, we can train the trainers. Okay. Um, we have trainers that work for us and we offer those classes um, as well for our staff as well as for the community. Okay. And I don't know if everyone is familiar like when you're the acronyms you're using yes, ALS, BLS, what is BLS all BLS is basic life support. Okay. ACLS is advanced cardiac life support. Okay. And what is the difference between the two? What is it that you're learning? BLS is uh, basic life support right. and that's the life support CPR um, for healthcare providers. Okay. Um, is what the class is actually listed as. Okay. Um, the advanced cardiac life support is training that our critical care areas have as well as a lot of the paramedics. Okay. Um, and that goes into a lot of the advanced medications, advanced procedures that we can do such as um, intubating patients and okay. giving them a breathing tube as well as um, giving them medications to try to keep their heart functioning or if they're in life-threatening emergencies how to help so with that's those. teaching basically the CPR. Well, do we use the compression now? Or what is it? CCC, isn't it? CAB, <laughs> compression <laughs> airway breathing, okay. um, is what they do for BLS. Okay. They do have heart saver, which basically goes into compressions. Um, there is a compressions only as well. Um, but for the for hospital, um, we do compression airway breathing for the basic life support. Okay. And then the advanced life support goes into um, uses the same basis, um, but then has advanced airways and advanced procedures for breathing and compressions and okay. medications and stuff. So all of our nursing staff has to be certified? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All of our nursing staff is BLS trained, okay. so for basic CPR. And that's not a one-time thing, right? I mean, they do it, but then they have to be recertified how often? Every two years, Every they two have to years. be recertified. Okay. Okay. Um, and what we've done is previously we were offering about four classes a month for mm -hmm. the basic life support. And for advanced life support, we were offering one class every two months. Oh, okay. Um, we have restructured that to now we offer the basic life support every Monday and Friday. Oh, wow. Every week. And um, then here at the hospital? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And for the advanced cardiac life support, we offer um, two classes a month. One is an initial class and the second class, that one is only open for employees, but it is um, a renewal class, which mm -hmm. incorporates ACLS and BLS together okay. kind of in one re now, certification. So the BLS is open to the public? They could come in and learn that as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that they go through education to sign up. I mean, obviously you can't just like walk in and say, hey, 
I want to learn about CPR today. <laughs> um, anybody can call down to the education okay. department and um, we can get them signed up for the basic life support. Um, currently I'm also working on seeing what we can do to actually get an online storefront oh. um, to where people could go online and register for those classes oh, okay. as well. Okay, so to register for the classes. But they, I was going to say, how do you learn CPR online? <laughs> Seems one of those you got to... <laughs> Actually, American Heart does have a program to where you can learn it online, really? but then there's a skill associated with it. I was going to say, because it seems like one of those things you really kind of have to have a hands-on. You, you have to verify the skill that they do, yeah. but there is an online training piece that can be done for that as well. Well, that's good, and yeah. probably a little maybe less, I don't know, intimidating for folks at the beginning to learn that basics, but sooner or later you're going to make sure you've mm. actually Touched we still have mannequins <laughs> and we still have yeah. all the information there okay. to be able to go through and actually show that hands-on skill. Great. Now, so the class, do you know what the cost is for general public to come? General, basically the class for the basic life support is $40 for the class. Well, that's pretty reasonable. And then how long is the class? A class is usually scheduled for about four hours, but depending on how many people are there and um, how long it takes to go through, it's a little, a little less, less but um, usually four hours okay. is about what we... A lot and then when the they're time. done, they they're certified. They get a little card that says. Once they they're done, we've got a card. Um, Pam Kowalski goes through mm -hmm. and actually does all the cards up for us down in the education department, mm -hmm. and um, we hand them out after the class is done. Usually. Very good. And then they, they're card carrying. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's good for two years. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> BLS, right? I said BLS. It okay, get it right. So, what other? I mean, are there other classes that we're offering for the public, or is it? Um, my goal is to open up and have some community outreach um, to start some heart saver classes. Be good. Um, there's also been some interest in offering some of those uh, CPR classes at the high school. So that's something oh. that we're looking at. Um, we currently partner with the JTED program mm -hmm. and a lot of the um, CNA students that are in high school will actually come to us and get the BLS training and then they um, work through us as a student extern within okay. our facility to get right. some of that training while they're in the hospital. That's great and I know like I said that we partner closely with MCC as well and working with them we've actually been a big supporter of their nursing program financially yes, as well as hiring a lot of their students obviously. Yes ma'am. So those are good partnerships that we have. Um, before I forget, I want to make sure we give the phone number for the education department. 263-5640. 5640. Okay. And we'll mention that again before the end of the show. So if people have questions, they can call. Um, I know you're doing a pretty good job of um, educating our employees about the opportunities you're offering. Because we had Grand Canyon was just here not too long ago and in the cafeteria and giving out information. Yes, ma'am. So are we getting a pretty good response, do you think, from our employees on that? We are. We actually had a representative from NAU here yesterday. Okay, very um, good. And she was very excited. She said she probably had um, 25 people that came by and stopped and actually filled out interest cards on what they good. were looking at. So um, we have had a great response within the facility for all of the continuing education opportunities that are there. Um, we're also setting up for lunch and learns within our facility oh, okay. um, for the staff as well as um, leaders to go through and make sure that they know of different opportunities and education that's available. But Excellent. Like I said, we're trying to do continuing education to where it's always available um, and changing the topic. So, but getting them on a standardized basis to where we can kind of standardize a and lot consistent of consistent probably yes, is important as well. Yes, ma'am. So we talked briefly before the break, and then I forgot to come back to that. We were talking about the other departments yes, that you've been reaching out to as well. So mm -hmm. there's other areas we that you're going to be looking at? I actually worked already some with the respiratory department, going through some of the skills that we had to help them get their competency set up right. to where we can line them up with the staff. Um, also have met with the nutrition department to go through and look to see what skills and competencies they require. Excellent. Well, you've got a big job, and I really appreciate what you're doing, Chris, and we thank you. I appreciate you being on the show today. Thank Rest you. assured, our nurses are always learning. So thanks for joining us, and we'll have another great guest on the program next week.